I, I wouldn't get uh, Jordan. You know, Jordan was a guard, I'm a forward. So it's a different, you know, it's a different matchup. Size to be in the top 10 in steals. Now you can assume that he would be in blocks, which to me shows versatility of what type of guy he really is. What's going on? What do you pick coming back with another one? Let's get it. We're going to talk some hoops today. We're going to talk the NBA Finals that we never got to see. Yes, yeah, the biggest what if NBA Finals, in my opinion. You know, Chicago Bulls coming off their, you know, three straight title. Title wins. Come on now. And then you had the Houston Rockets. They went back to back. And they added Clyde Drexler on that second run. Yes, the NBA Finals matchup that we never got to see. Michael Jordan, Hakeem Olajuwon. Let's just say these two were the best players in the NBA around this time. The mid-90s, if we want to be real. Like 93 through 96, even though Jordan took a hiatus for a year, he came back you know, still strong, still one of the best, probably the best player in the NBA, Jordan. And Hakeem always doing his thing. You know, 26, 27 points per game, double-digit rebounds, always in the defensive player of the year conversations, Hakeem Olajuwon. So, you know, two of the top players in the league for sure around this time. And we never got this matchup because after Michael Jordan beat the Lakers, then he beat the Blazers, and he beat the Suns, Jordan took a year off. He took a year off, and when he took a year off, the Rockets, they had a squad. They had Kenny the Jet Smith, Mario Ellie, you know, Vernon Maxwell, Robert Ory, Sam Cassell, young Sam Cassell. So they had a squad. They did, and they beat the New York Knicks when Jordan retired. They beat the New York Knicks, and then the very next year, they acquired Clyde Drexler from the Blazers. And Clyde Drexler was one of those athletic shooting guards that – Reminded you of Julius Irvin, you know, the way he could glide. You know, they were, if it wasn't for Jordan, we'd probably be called him Clyde Drexler, fucking Air Drexler. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But Michael Jordan didn't like being compared to Clyde Drexler. So in the 92 NBA Finals, oh, he went at Clyde Drexler. He did. He said, just because we can both jump and glide, don't, don't get it twisted. I got game. I got real game. Clyde Drexler do as well. But Jordan say, I got real game. You know what I mean? So... Clyde, he came over to Houston in the trade, and they went, you know, back to back. They went back to the finals, and this matchup will be very intriguing because the Bulls, they play some tough defense, especially on the perimeter with Jordan and Pippen. You know, B.J. Armstrong played some tight defense as well with Paxson. You know, they play that tight defense, and Horace Grant, he held his own down low. But the Rockets, oh, they had a good defense as well. They did. Halajuan in the middle. You know, Mario Eli, he was tough. Robert Ory, a long defender. Kenny the Jeff Smith, a smart defender. And Vernon Maxwell. But the key is, Vernon Maxwell, he left the team. In the start of the playoffs, 94-95 NBA season, Vernon Maxwell left the team because Clyde Drexler was shaving into his minutes, and he didn't like that. He didn't like that, even though he was going to be the sixth man coming off the bench along with Sam Cassell. He didn't like that. He didn't. And he left the team after game one of the Western Conference playoffs. He did. And this is why it's intriguing, because the Rockets, they wouldn't have had anyone to guard Michael Jordan. They would have had to double Jordan for sure. And even Maxwell, he was a real good defender, Vernon Maxwell, but he was very aggressive and anxious. Jordan would have hit him with a few pump fakes, and he would have been on the bench with two fouls every game, two, three fouls, because Jordan would have used Vernon Maxwell aggressiveness against him. That's how Jordan would have played him. Like, oh, you super aggressive, give him some pump fakes, you know, get him up in the air. Yeah, Jordan would have schooled Vernon Maxwell if Maxwell wasn't disciplined on defense. But Maxwell was a tough defender, but they would have no answer for Jordan, and the Bulls would have no answer for Olajuwon. They wouldn't. Grant couldn't do, wouldn't be able to do shit with Elijah Jordan was a great help side defender. This is when he would have to come off his man and help down low. But you know what happened? Rockets had shooters. They had shooters. Even when Vernon Maxwell left the team, you still had Sam Cassell, Kenny the Jet Smith knocking down shots. He got hot in the finals against the Magic. You got Robert Ory, Mario Ellie hit some clutch shots. 
Like, they had shooters. So, you try to double Olajuwon, oh, he kick out the shooters. Easy. And they all could hit. They could hit. And that Rockets team, that second, second peak, they, technically they weren't supposed to get back because they went through a brutal playoff schedule. Brutal. They played like the Jazz, the Spurs, the Suns. It was brutal, you know, and they got back. They got back with that championship grit, heart. But this would definitely be an intriguing matchup because they wouldn't have an answer for Elijah and the Rockets wouldn't have an answer for Jordan. Michael Jordan and Elijah they definitely respected each other as, you know, two of the top players in the league. They did. But a matchup would be crazy. You know, Scottie Pippen, Jordan Ebby. You know, on the perimeter, trying to help out down low on Elijah But if Elijah kick out to them shooters, shit. <laughs> Three is better than two. You know, Jordan, they would have no answer for Jordan. Like I say, Maxwell would have been the only player that could make it tough. And he left the team during this run. But the Rockets beat the Magic. You know, and I feel like this was the strongest Rockets team. You know, because they had just won one. So they were coming off that momentum. And the Bulls, they... Coming off that three-piece, so this would have been the matchup that we needed. Yes, Jordan versus Elijah won. And whoever won, won this matchup, they would probably say, oh, this is the best player in the league, this or that. So these two never, you know, squared off, so we could see. But they were both dominant. Jordan was the most dominant perimeter player, and Elijah Wan was the most dominant big man. So would have been a great matchup. Let me know who y'all think would have won this matchup. You know, in the NBA Finals, Chicago Bulls, 93 Bulls versus the 95 Rockets. Would have won that matchup. You know, Jordan, six rings, you know. Won three, took a break, came back. A lot of people forget he did lose to Orlando when he tried to come back during the middle part of the season, I want to say. But that next year after that, 96, Hawk. So what, 72 and 10, huh? he let us know, like, oh, I'm back for real. Stop playing. Then that Rockets team, they beat the Knicks and they beat the Magic. They went back to back. Clutch City, but let me know what y'all think. Who would have won this NBA Finals matchup? Jordan versus Elijah Wan. Elijah Wan had a great supporting cast. He did. He did, but drop some down in the comments. Who would have won this matchup? Two of the best players in the mid-90s. I think the two best players in the mid-90s, in my opinion. But let me know what y'all think. Drop some down in the comments. Keep the fire coming. Keep it rolling. That's what I do. I love it. Hoop talk, baby. You know you can't check me anyway. We out.